Strong and flexible supple pelvic floor muscles are essential for our good health and well-being. It prevents us from urinary or fecal incontinence, um, as well as promote good sexual function and satisfaction. It helps us to support our core, as well as um, supports our good breathing technique. Now, peeing during workout, running, sneezing, or coughing is not normal, but there is help. Uh, good and strong, sorry, strong and flexible pelvic floor muscle also alleviates back issue, back problem, because it promotes good postural alignment. Now, this tutorial is part of a beginner series tutorial, which I call it Deep Dive into Pilates. So continuing from our first breathing tutorial, in this tutorial, we're going to discuss the pelvic bowl and the pelvic floor muscles. Before we tap in into our pelvic floor muscles, let's address the pelvic bowl. Where is our pelvic bowl or the pelvic basin? So I have Mr. Bones here to help me um, address the pelvic bowl. Okay, so the pelvic bowl is here, or the pelvic basin. It's this area here, okay? Now, you see that this structure is a bridge connecting our um, upper body and our lower body. The leg bone, the thigh bone, is connected into the hip joint here, the acetabulum. Now, the pelvic bowl is made of two hip bones. So here's the right hip bone and here's the left hip bone. The hip bones is called or are called ilium. You see that the two hip bones are connected to the front of the body to a cartilage bony landmark here called the pubic symphysis or the pubic bone. We're going to, or I'm going to turn Mr. Bones towards the back so we can see what's happening at the back of the pelvis. So the two ilium is also connected to this bony part here is called the sacrum. The sacrum is the lower aspect of the spine. Okay, so this is the spine and it goes down to the lower aspect called the sacrum. There is another lowest aspect of the spine. We call it the coccyx or the tailbone. Right, the ilium, the hip bone, also has a lower aspect of the bony landmark here called the ischiums, and the lowest point here is called the sit bone or the ischial tuberosity. Okay, now I want to address another landmark, bony landmark in the pelvis. So he's, a little, he's very sticky, guys. So, um, here we go. Now, you, perhaps your uh, Pilates teacher often say this name. ASIS. What is ASIS? So, ASIS is the two front bony landmark that protrudes out at the front of the pelvis. And at the back, I'm spinning him again, it's what we call the PSIS, the two bony landmarks that sticks out here. Right, now I would like to invite you to find those bony structures of the pelvis. Okay. Please stand up if you're sitting down. I want you to take your index fingers and trail it down the front of the pelvis. And you may find there's two sticking out bones on the left and the right, the one that protrudes out the most. Those are your ASIS, okay? Now, have your thumb like a bridge over the hip bones, the top of it, and let the hand sit on them. Now, those is the top of your ilium called the ilia crest, which is this part here. Trail your thumb down the sacrum, down the body, and you'll find two little nozzles of protruding bones at the back. Those are your PSIS, this bone here, okay? Moving down inward and down through the pelvis, you feel your sacrum, 
this bone here. And then going down further between the bum cheeks, you might have to tip the pelvis up a little bit more. That is your coccyx, your tail burnt, which is the last aspect, the lowest aspect of the spine. All right, now I want you to tip the pelvis even further and then find the sitting bones, which has the two, yeah, I'm asking you to feel the twitch a little bit here. Now find the sitting bones, which are the two bony mark that you can feel, they're quite hard underneath, inside the bottom, okay? You can also feel them by sitting down. You can transfer your weight left and right. You can find that you're sitting on those two bony landmarks. Okay, I hope you got that. Now, I'm gonna turn to Mr. Bones again. So that, or this, is your pelvic bowl. The pelvic bowl is made of connective tissues and muscles. And that's where the pelvic floor muscles sits. Okay, the pelvic floor muscle is a sling of large muscles that spend across the floor of the pelvic bowl. Now, everybody has pelvic floor muscles, female, and males. Yes, you gentlemen out there, you have pelvic floor muscles. The difference between the female and the male pelvic floor muscles are on the orifices, the openings. So the female, we have the urethra, the vaginals, and the anus. Whereas the male, you only have the openings of the urethra and the anus. A friend of mine, Ashley Riche, who is a great person, and she's also my mentor, she's a faculty of Babasi and in South Africa, in her fantastic workshop on pregnancy and postnatal, she mentioned, so she called these orifices as the passages, and I like to call that name. So I'm gonna call them passages. So we have the, um, the urethra, the front passage, we have the vaginas, the middle passage, and the anus, the back passage. Let's just call them those names today. So I'm going to, we're going to talk about the pelvic floor muscles. Now the pelvic floor muscles have layers in them, all right? Um, you have the superficial layer, which is the, um, the bottom layer of the, the outmost layer, the bottom layer of the pelvic bowl. Okay, and then you have the deeper layer in the lesser opening or, or the smaller opening of the pelvic. And that layer is also known as the diaphragm of the pelvis. We can go through that later. So I have this, I hope they're beautiful, the beautiful diagram of the pelvic floor. Now, this is the superficial layer of the pelvis muscle. Uh, pelvic floor muscles, and this is the deep layer of pelvic floor muscle. Let's address the superficial layer. Now, this is the view that you have from the underneath side. So if you're looking down up into the pelvis, that's the view of the pelvic floor muscles. Now, remember that, if you don't know yet, the muscle work with the direction of the muscle fibers. The lines here are muscle fibers, okay? What are the blue dots here? Now, the blue dots here, here is our pubic symphysis, which is the front point of the uh, pelvic bowl. And then the back here is your coccyx, okay? The tailbone here at the back of the pelvic floor. Um, and you have the left sits bone, ischial tuberosity, and the right sits bone here. This, if you connect lines through them, the pelvic floor, your career, sorry, if you connect the line through them, they look like a little diamond, okay? This beautiful shape. The pelvic floor lies inside, within them. All right, so, the superficial layer of the pelvic floor. Now, I want you to look at, have a look at the figure eight muscles around it. I'm not gonna name the muscle because this is the beginner tutorial. I don't wanna confuse you, but I wanted to look at the fibers of the muscles. Right, the first muscle fibers I wanted to focus is um, the figure eight here, okay? And you see the fibers hugs around the passages. I'm sorry, before that, we're gonna address the passages. Okay, so you have the back passages, the anus, and then you have the vagina, and then you have the urethra, 
So the front passage and the middle passage here. And then we have the muscles wrapping around them, the figure eight muscles. And the fibers goes around and around and around, hugging them into the center of the orifices, the passages. And then the next muscles we're gonna address is if you see this, minus, uh, this muscle that crosses the, to the left and the right of the sits bone, okay? And the fibers of the muscles goes again, horizontal or transverse line, connecting the ischium, the ilium, on the left and the right. And now this triangle divides the diamond into the upper half and the bottom half. So the front and the back, sorry, not the up and bottom, the front and the back of the pelvic floor. And then you also have this muscle that runs along the ilium here, okay? So remember, this is the pubic bone, this is the ischial tuberosity. So the ilium here, it just runs along them, okay? We're gonna ignore this muscle here because it's a bit of deeper layer. Right, now if you notice or if you see this muscles are always hugging and, and connecting, the, anchoring the points of, uh, the four points of the, uh, of the pelvis. The function of this um, superficial muscle of the pelvic floor, it control the passages, the orifices, the opening, the anus, the vaginas, and the urethra. Okay, if your pelvic floor muscles on this level is uh, weak or short, tight, short, weak and lengthened, stretched out, short and tight, also worn out, they're going to affect the control you have on these um, passages. This is where incontinence issue come about. Right, you're gonna have the urinary incontinence or the fecal incontinence. In the worst cases, you may have prolapse. You don't want that prolapse. When you strengthen the muscles in this layer, you will also strengthen the control of those passages. Okay, that makes sense? So this is the superficial, the lowest layer of the um, pelvic floor. Now. Let's move on to the deeper layer. Right, so, sorry, going back again to the superficial, you see this line here, this fiber here, this muscle is actually part of the deeper layer of the pelvic floor. So, the deeper layer or the lesser layer of the pelvic floor is also known as the diaphragm of the pelvis, which we will discuss about it in a bit. Okay, again, I'm not gonna say the names, but I wanted to have a look at the fibers of this layer. The fibers of the layer runs down and up around. This is a group of muscle here. So from here to here, it's a group of muscle. I'm gonna say that, it's a levator ani muscles. And the fibers goes up from the um, ilium and goes down around the back passage and then up again. Okay, like a U shape, and it spans all the way to the ischial tuberosity and then onto the other side as well. And then you also have another one going to the coccyx. Okay, if you look at this picture, this graphic, now this graphic or this picture, it looks like a fan too. Therefore, this deep. Uh, deeper pelvic floor muscle is also known as a fan-like muscle. So I'm just, I'm just, I drew this, sorry, I'm tongue twister. I drew this little um, kind of rainbows around it just to show you how that transfers into like a fan-like muscle, okay? So this is the deeper layer above this superficial layer. What is the function of this um, deeper layer pelvic floor muscles? It supports the content of the abdominal cavity. Pelvic, abdominal, okay? In the abdominal cavity, you have the organs, such as the intestine resting on it, the bladder. For female, you have the uterus. And this layer too is also a passage for uh, the birth, 
of a baby. It's a passageway for the baby to descend down into the pelvic bowl. Okay, now if this pelvic floor muscle is weak, you will weaken the support of the abdominal cavity. You got that? So let's imitate or emulate this shape of the fan leg. So imagine, okay, my palms are the fan like muscle of the pelvic floor, right? So this is the coccyx, this is the pubic bone, this is the front of the pelvis, this is the back of the pelvis. That's the back of my pelvis, that's the front of my pelvis, okay? The pubic symphysis here. So this is my fan here, and my, my, my fan is lengthened or stretch out or relax, okay? When they contract, this muscle contract, it comes wrapping in, you can see what happened with my hand. All right, relaxes, contract, relaxes, contract. And so is the function of that pelvic floor. It supports the content of the abdominal cavity. Yep, you got that? Okay, now a lot of people think that the pelvic floor is a flat surface like the floor of the, where we're standing on. It's not the case. The pelvic floor is like a bowl-like, you know, it's like a little suction, it's like a bowl-like um, shape, okay? Now, I talked about earlier that the pelvic floor muscle also supports a good breathing technique. Why? And I also mentioned that this layer is a diaphragm of the pelvis, okay? So, remembering my first tutorial, if you haven't watched the first tutorial, I invite you to go back and um, study on the, or watch the tutorial on the breathing. Right, the diaphragmatic breathing. Remember, the diaphragm contracts down an inhalation and putting pressure on the abdominal cavity. It's the same thing as the inhale. The pelvic floor also descends down with the diaphragm and then it contracts back up. So in a way that the pelvic floor and the diaphragm, it needs to be in a harmony. It needs to go up and down. An imagery that you could probably feel is like a jellyfish-like. You know, it's nice. It, it sort of floats up and then it dance down this way. Okay? Good. Now, let's talk about what happened with the pelvis when the, uh, this pelvic floor area is weakened. Okay, so you have the fan-like muscle. Okay, what happened is that it's going to take your pelvis into an arch position. All right, so the front is open, it's stretched, it's relaxed. It's going to take your pelvis into what we call the arch or anterior tilt. Now, if your pelvis is in this position, instantly you will know, bam, lower back. There's so much stress happening in the lower back here, and you find yourself into some lower back issues, okay? When your pelvic floor is tight the other way, say the fan closes, all right? And it's gonna take your pelvis into up, tuck under, posterior tilt. And have a look at that, have a look at my lower back. I'm diminishing my curve in the lower back. Okay, so instantly I'm jeopardizing the strength of my lower back. My lower, uh, my back muscles are not activated here. Okay, to get and promote, to promote a good alignment, you need to promote a good pelvic floor connection. Now, of course, if you have lower back pain, if you're in this position, other on that position, a lot of people will advise you, work on your abdominal, mobilize your lower back, work in abdominal, mobilize your lower back. That is very true, and but it's only the first equation on helping that lower back pain. If you addressed it from the pelvic floor, find a good connection and find a good strength of the pelvic floor, Naturally, your pelvis will come into a neutral position. So neutral pelvis will be our next tutorial. 
Okay, we will address that. So, when you address the pelvic floor, you will address a good position of the pelvic bowl, which then address a good alignment of the body. And that's why that lower back pain will gradually diminish. So not only you need to tap onto the abdominal, but you need to tap deeper into the pelvic floor and get connected into this, well, with this pelvic floor muscles. Okay, so you have the superficial layer, ignore these lines, figure eight across the line and on the side of the triangle. And then you have the deeper layer, the diaphragmatic, the diaphragm of the pelvis, which is kind of like a horseshoe shaped and like a fan-like. Think of it as a, a fan drawing in and out, okay? Remember that muscle works in the direction of the muscle fibers and the pelvic floor muscle is not a flat muscle. As think about of a jellyfish. It needs to be like, I like to give this idea or imagery to my um, clients, is think about trampoline. You put pressure on the trampoline, you jump down, and it to bounce out and spring back, okay? That's a lot of pressure we often put on pelvic floor now that pelvic floor needs to be strong enough to rebound up. Otherwise, you're just gonna bear down the content of the abdominal cavity into the pelvis. And we're gonna have issues like incontinence or prolapse. God forbid, prolapse. We don't wanna have that. So, I think, I think we have dressed, I think I've addressed all that we need to know in a short tutorial and beginner tutorial on the pelvic bowl and the pelvic floor muscles. Next, I'm going to do a mat work, a short mat work on the pelvic floor. How to find them, how to connect them, and how to strengthen them. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. I hope to see you in my other classes, Pilates class in, the video, uh, in this channel, or another tutorial. If you look, if you like, what you're listening to or watching to, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I hope to see you again. Thank you.